I hope you're having a great day and today I'm here with a book review as I said in my last video and this book review is going to be on The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Brickin. I give this book 4 out of 5 stars. I really love this book, but I still have some issues that I want to share with you guys. So basically in this world it is a post post apocalyptic. So in this world it is after a post apocalyptic bomb. I don't know where I was going to go with this word. Anyways, a big nuclear bomb explodes on the earth and it kills a lot of people. But the few who remain start showing some strange abilities. These abilities are some kind of magic and people are afraid of those persons which are kids only. I don't know why. That's strange. So in this world, uh, we follow Ruby who's our main character in this book and she turns 10 and then she starts showing some crazy abilities. So her parents send her into a concentration concentra concentration that's hard to say into a concentration camp where she will be held by these people and she just gonna stay there until she dies. That's pretty much how it goes in there because she is staying there with a bunch of other kids that are also um, part of this mutant X gene we could say like that, mutant gene. I don't know how to say that but they all have superpowers. So there are five groups in this um, crazy abilities. There are the greens, the yellows, the oranges, the blues and the reds. The oranges and the reds are the most dangerous ones because they have the most powerful powers. They have the most powerful abilities. Ruby is classified green, so she goes with the greens and then she escapes. And that's pretty much what the plot is about because we don't really know what's happening in there because she's trying to escape and then she meets some guys and a girl and they say, well, we are going to a place where kids like us can live happily so would you want to come and she's like well why not so she goes with them and but she's still tracked by the concentration camp so that's kind of a runaway if you can say it like that but that's pretty much what the story is about i really love the main character ruby she i thought she was really badass so yeah i thought she was really badass and that she kicked asses in this book so yes that, that's pretty great. There are not a lot of other characters. There's Liam, Chubbs and Zoo. And Zoo is a little young girl of 10 years old, I believe. Chubb is um, one of the guys who help her to go find the uh, place where all the persons can live. And Liam is like the future boyfriend that, sh that Ruby will have. So there's this guy which they found with all of the other kids that have super abilities. And this kid is an orange. His name is Clance. That's the weird name. So he's really powerful and he's going to help the kids to fight against the humans and the government somehow. How the hell is he going to do that? But actually, Ruby is not really green. But I already knew that from the beginning of the book. I was like, she can't be green because green are weak and they don't have any powers. So it was obvious that she wasn't going to turn out a green because she's actually in orange. And I don't think that's a spoiler. Mainly her power, at the beginning you don't really know what her power is. So I won't go into details with it because it was a really big thing that I wanted to know. When I was reading the book, I was like, what's her power, I want to know. To talk about the other uh, characters, I really liked Chubbs. He really reminded me of Kinji from the Shadow Me series. Actually, a lot of things made me think about the Shadow Me series. I don't like comparing books, but that was really a like. Okay, so for those who don't know what the Shadow Me series is about, well, this is exactly that's not Shadow Me, that's the third book, because I don't own the first book in English, but that, that's, I already told you that, so I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, Talk about it too long. So this book is about a young girl. She has a lethal touch, so when she touches someone, the person dies. And in this book, uh, when Ruby touches someone, the person lost her memory, or his memory. Yeah, kind of. In the first book of Shadow Me, she meets someone who she's deeply in love with, but she cannot touch, because she'll kill him. And in the darkest minds, Ruby finds Liam, but she's afraid to erase his memory if she touches him. Kenji is a really kick-ass, he's really funny, and he doesn't do anything that we ask him to do. In the darkest minds, Chubbs doesn't like to be held by anyone, and he doesn't follow Liam, he doesn't follow anyone. 
In the Shadow Me series, Juliet, our main character, meets someone whom she can touch without killing him. That that makes a tri love triangle if you don't realize it. In the Darkest Minds, Ruby meets this guy, Clance, who's the only other orange around. D do you get the point where I'm saying right now? I don't like to compare books, but honestly, they are really alike. And I don't like that. I, I don't like it. I don't like it because if you don't already know, the Shadow Me series is my favorite series of all time. Of all time. I really love that series and I don't want to compare it to The Darkest Minds because that would be really mean because my hopes would be really, really high. Well, actually they were already high because a lot of people that had been raving about The Darkest Minds so I was like, oh, it seems really good. But if I keep on talking about mainly the book itself because it is a review about the Darkest Minds, not the Shadow Me series or comparing books together. The first 100 pages of this book was really, really long. The first 50 pages of this is actually a setting. It's long for a setting. I know that people like to be set into this world and to know more about what's happening, but that's way too long, you don't understand. They could have put it into 20 pages. I would have been fine. And from 50 to 100, she escapes. That's really damn long, escaping for 50 pages. You know, it's it's not... You don't escape for 50 pages, you escape for like 10 pages or 20 if you're generous. She was describing everything she was seeing. Oh, there's a tree there. There's another one. There's another tree. Oh, wow. The tree doesn't have... His leaves, oh my god, that was really annoying and long. I wasn't sure to keep reading this book, but I still did it and I really enjoyed the rest. The rest was absolutely amazing, but the beginning was really damn slow. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. I would recommend it to anyone who likes science fiction, powers, magic. That I think that's all I'm gonna say for this review. Um, give it a thumbs up if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and all that jazz. Leave a comment down below if you read this book and what are your thoughts about this book, I would really like to know. And yeah, I'm gonna see you soon with another video. Bye!